This is the course AEDT 1120U, Foundations of Digital Teaching and Learning Technologies. This is session two, video clip number one, and the title of this video clip is The Role of Clip Critical Review. The analysis questions for this video clip are as follows. Number one, how does opinion dear, differ from criticism? Number two, what is the role of experts in Longino's set of requirements for communities of learners? Number three, what should you be doing according to Engel's suggestions for peer review when listening to an oral presentation? And number four, what is the learning environment in this course and how would you characterize that environment? I've noticed over the years that students at every level of the education system are reluctant to enter into a discussion that may be deemed to be a criticism of a peer's work. Even if asked to formally assess a cl classmate's work, much of the criticism, if included, tends to be focused on superficial issues. While there may be issues of shortcomings in student understanding, it may be possible that the problem arises from a lack of appreciation of the importance of criticism as a form of oral debate and perhaps from an inability to separate the person from the work. Critique or criticism then can be defined as a systematic analysis of work. It is usually carried out in the form of written or oral discussion. According to Wikipedia, please see the page reference below. Critique or criticism, in quote, is based upon an informed opinion and never upon personal opinion. Informed opinion then is accepted as being technical knowledge, personal or professional experience, or specified training, end quote. And that's taken from Wikipedia 2012, the page critique. In order for learning to be facilitated within a community of learners or practitioners, such as the community that hopefully will be established within this course, a balance must be established between comfort, security, and criticism. This applies to all members of the community, including the instructor and the TA, as well as the learners within the community. The scientific, and I'm using a very broad definition of this word here, the scientific community um, relies on the process of peer review to ensure that a certain standard of rigor and quality is maintained, and that's taken from Wenger 2000. The community of practitioners, like any other, has certain conditions and standards that determine the strength of warrants for knowledge claims. Longino, in 1994, identifies four conditions that a community of practitioners or learners, according to her, must meet if consensus is to count as knowledge rather than mere opinion. Number one, there must be publicly recognized forms for criticism. Number two, there must be uptake of criticism. The community needs to do more than merely tolerate dissent. It must act on it. Number three, there must be publicly recognized standards for evaluation of theory and practice. And number four, there must be equality of intellectual authority. What is included or excluded must result from critical dialogue or negotiation rather than the exercise of political or economic power. In this course, all students are required to participate in an online community of learners under such conditions. The suggestions on this page are taken from a course conducted at Eastern Indiana University. Rest assured that while the students in that course are graded upon their critiques, we will not be doing this, but the criticisms that are offered during the discussions following presentations will be required in order to contribute to the creation of knowledge. Engels 2003 then suggests the following. Number one, the goal of a peer review is to help your classmates present their ideas more effectively. Number two, jot down notes for your peer review while you are listening to the presentation. This can be done on paper, or if you prefer, you could take notes on your computer using an app such as Word or WordPad or Evernote or your favorite app. Number three, address the issues of, and for more details, please see the paper cited in reference below, A, audience awareness, B, introduction, C, the research topic or problem, D, analysis, uh, ideas and analysis, and E, more general considerations such as analytical thinking, the presentation of evidence, 
questions and answers, etc. And that's taken from Engels 2003, peer review of oral presentations. Another idea that you will need to keep in mind is the one that is made on this slide. Quote, what makes a critique different from a critical design review is that we are not here to find flaws. We're here to learn from the design and to explore where it works well and where it could be improved. Un end quote. And this is taken from Spool, 2011. In other words, the point of criticism is to help each other to learn. And Spool, 2011, moving from critical review to critique is the reference that was made. On a theoretical level, then, we will look at Habermas's ideas. Uh, Grundy, in 1987, subsumed three cognitive interests of curriculum in the ther theoretical orientation, the technical, the practical, and the emancipatory. Um, these are based largely on an ad adaptation of the writings of German philosopher Jürgen Habermas uh, to a, uh, an educational setting following the lead of Carr and Chemist in 1986. The technical interest then deals primarily with, um, quote, controlling and managing the environment, end quote, and that's taken again from Grundy, 1987, or, quote, controlling the environment through rule following action based on empirically grounded laws, end quote. Essentially, this dimension refers to the use of experimental research in order to produce positivist knowledge of teaching grounded in observations and experiences of the world. In other words, the process product type of knowledge suggested by Cochrane, Smith, and Lytle. And as Hodgson in 2001 explains it, technical action research, therefore, focuses on externally generated questions or research and aims to promote, promote more efficient and effective practice. It may lead to improvements in the curriculum to teachers' ability to implement it more effectively and more efficiently, but it does not alter the power relationships inherent in traditional forms of curriculum making. Reflection and the understand, self-understandings of teachers are appropriated to fit the concerns and interests of others. Taken from Hodson, 2001. The practical interest, the second of these interests, is focused on understanding, quote, understanding the environment so that one is able to un, uh, interact with it, end quote taken from Grundy, 1987, or, quote, understanding the environment through interaction based on a consensual interpretation of meaning, end quote. According to Grundy, 1987, this interest includes understanding the environment in such a way as to know how to include moral or ra and rational judgments when deciding what is the best way to proceed in individual circumstances. This understanding is developed only in agreement with other practitioners. It is based on a realization that human activities are steeped in the moral and ethical and uh, that decisions to act come through deliberation on alternatives. And that's a quote taken from Rear and Feldman, 1999. Perhaps the most important interest is the final one, the emancipatory uh, interest. Grundy, 1987, considers the emancipatory interest as being individualistic, being using self-reflection as a primary mechanism. The notions of justice and equality are included in emancipation. Grundy then defines the emancipation interest as, quote, a fundamental interest in emancipation and empowerment to engage in autonomous action arising out of authentic, critical insights into the social constructum of hum human society, end quote. The emancipatory interest urges teachers and their students to to change their learning environment in ways that allow for social and p political ideas of freedom, equality, and justice. Rear Feldman in 1999 state that, quote, the emancipatory orientation arises from a critical perspective that seeks to uncover the societal structures that coerce and inhibit freedom, end quote. It's interesting to note that the emphasis, emphasis evident in both the practical and emancipatory types of action research is one of practicality for teachers. That is, they are grounded in the subjective experience of the participants. In the past, the tendency of those in teacher development has seen, been to overload teachers with highly theoretical and technical material, much of which uh, seemed irrelevant to the daily problems of uh, classroom life and held little interest for most teachers, Hudson 2001. 
In other words, teachers who are involved in the above types of action research will have some choice with respect to the subject of their research and will be able to determine for themselves to some extent how they will proceed. That does not mean that teachers should be left to their own devices. There is a critical role for a facilitator. And these, uh, the references are Grundy 87, Curriculum Product or Praxis, um, and some additional writers that you might want to look out at in this area include Mesereau, Critical Theory of Adult Learning and Education, and Lando, Hypertext 2.0, The Convergence of Contemporary Critical Theory and Technology. And those are given on the slide that is shown on the screen at this point. To conclude this video clip, the synthesis questions are as follows. Number one, why is opinion deemed to be invalid in academic circles? Number two, why does Longino state that criticism must be acted upon in a community of learners? Number three, what relationships exist between critique and the idea expressed that as we learn more from our mistakes than from the things that we can already do well? And number four, how does the emancipatory interest relate to the type of education opportunities you want to provide to your learners? And this brings us to the end of not only the synthesis questions, but also the video clip.